A very good afternoon to all. Eh? Praises to the Dhamma. So today is 1st September 2022, afternoon session. 3.2. Understanding the five ways to overcome the five mental hindrances and unwholesome thoughts that have a reason is also very important. The first two ways are, one, think of the direct opposite wholesome thoughts. Two, contemplate the consequence of danger of holding or clinging on to these unwholesome or wrong thoughts. These two ways are still thought-based meditation, but they are very important skillful means that can help the cultivator to overcome the unwholesome thoughts via the first two right efforts, whereas the third and fourth ways are meditative training as taught by the Buddha to help the cultivator develop the wisdom needed to free the mind from such unwholesome thoughts. This is especially so for the third way. Three, the Buddha said, just silence your mind and don't do anything. Then the mind will settle down on its own to return to its natural state of silence and stillness before the steering conditioned by oneself delusion. This understanding can lead to profound wisdom. Just like J. Krishnamurti's famous quote, the very flowering of the unwholesome thought, like anger, etc., is the very ending of that thought. Number four. Then the Buddha wire is fourth way train and cultivator to develop true understanding or wisdom. Wire tracing is origination factors and retrospectively reverse it via understanding to liberate, to liberate the mind. The origination of these unwholesome thoughts is always via one of the sense doors consciousness, especially the seeing, hearing, and thought consciousness sense doors. When we understand the cause behind the stirring of the mind, then we should contemplate the three turnings of the four normal truths, especially the second turning, until the wisdom is very stable and clear. So the next time when we confront similar seeing or hearing or thought consciousness situation, we will not be deluded by them anymore and can have the wisdom to deal with the situation. The ability to silence the mind and to accept the reality of the moment without any reaction or judgment is wisdom. Then to be able to use this clarity of awareness or heedfulness to investigate the truth and characteristics of all phenomena in our daily life is true meditation. The ability to accept the reality of all sensations, feelings is also wisdom. The mind can only understand what is going on via just a silent inner awareness to observe the truth and the reality of the moment without any suppression or control of any emotion, i.e., just allowing it to flower to develop the wisdom that comes with it. Use the mind-sweeping method, combine with metta, to decondition your heedless thinking so that your mind can be trained to be in the state of relaxed, silent inner awareness, to be heedful to meditate. This heedfulness will be able to investigate clearly how the tactile consciousness really comes to be. You just silence your mind to be aware to investigate the truth and the reality of the moment. And you will understand how they arise and pass away with every moment of arising of the tactile consciousness. You can then be aware of the pulling sensation to understand clearly how the form and mind function. There is always a knowing element that can be aware of the pulling sensation phenomena that has a reason. The awareness or mind moment is always is always moment to moment, hence not really at all, no no reality at all because they are all condition arising mental phenomena consciousness. Only only, but due to your self delusion, you will grasp and cling onto them, hence conditioning your suffering via your wrong view. This understanding is very important to enable one to break free from the concept of self or self-delusion. 3.3. Meditation is not about right or and wrong. Question 2. Brother Dio, when I meditate, I don't feel any pain. 
but I am aware of thoughts. When, when aware, I tell myself to be silent and go back to Anapanasati. Is that correct? Brother Dio answered, Meditation is not about right and wrong, but it is more towards realizing wisdom that can free our mind from, our, from all suffering. When you are just silent and aware, you are heedful and in that heedful state, you can develop a lot of understanding while you're observing your own form and mind, and mind without any judgment or comment. You only need to continue doing Anapanasati when you need to train your mind to be aware so that it is not heedless. Once your uh, heedfulness has already stabilized, technically you don't need to hold on to the Anapanasati training anymore. Similarly, for the mind sweeping and meta exercise too, for they are just skillful means to train the mind. The key is relaxation of both the body and mind, followed by the silent mind, leading to a tranquil state of mind that has clarity and awareness within to see things as they are, thereby realizing the wisdom. So meditation have four important supports, and they are relax, aware, 24 hours continuity and trust. The key to meditation is awareness or sati, which is also the first factor of enlightenment. With awareness, you can develop the understanding of why your mind is like that, how it is conditioned to react to sense experiences, why are your wrong and deluded views and opinions of things. That is Dharma investigation. Inquire deep onto who is doing the meditation. What is the I and the me all about? Why did the Buddha say it is Sakarya Diti or self delusion? Why are the why are the thoughts so active, judgmental, and intrusive? And why can't they just let things be? The moment you are aware, the Dharma will come to you. Understand it and awaken to it. Relax and be with the moment in silent awareness. You experience all of the beauty of life and existence. Once you realize, you will know how to accord and flow. Then you will not be afflicted anymore. Hence, life becomes very meaningful and very beautiful. All this can be understood if you are not deluded. See how your attachment and craving arise during your meditation when you lack wisdom. Most cultivators attach to the good and calm meditation meditation. They hold on to all the things that their mind has created via their consciousness and is content not knowing these things are all impermanent and empty, thus causing suffering the moment they grasp onto them. Through this Dharma sharing, you can develop wisdom much faster. Otherwise, it will take you a long time to understand the full picture of the cultivation yourself. These notes are very useful and all of you must read them through them again and again to stabilize your understanding. Similarly, for the recorded talks, you must listen to them again and again to develop the clear understanding of the Dharma shared. This is how you can progress along the path of Dharma. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So make sure you understand what has been shared here. They are very useful. I always say. Don't use knowledge. Yeah? Don't use thought to just believe this is what is being discussed, yeah? and you already know. Unless you can do it without looking at the notes or the sharing, which means you still don't understand. As I realize a lot of people, they do meditation without understanding what is meditation, without all this understanding very difficult for you to progress. So like here I say, through this Dhamma sharing, you can develop wisdom much faster. Otherwise it will take you a long time to understand the full picture of the cultivation yourself. So draw it out, map it out. Yeah? If you cannot write it out, map it out and understand it, then how can you meditate when you sit or when you do your formal meditation? You can't even come out with the understanding before you meditate. 
So you have to go through. Yeah? So what is the meditation? Start by the Buddha. Yeah? Who are you? What are you? All this inquiry is part and parcel of the step you're supposed to do. First is to develop heedfulness. After you are heedful, then automatically you can do the awareness-based meditation. You will progress. But the problem is you don't know what is. Oh, sorry, not you. A lot of people don't know what is a deep. What is ever mindful? What is heedfulness? So when you don't understand or you know, what you can do is have a skillful means to help you, like Anapanasati, to anchor your mind. Mindfulness of the in and out brain until it stabilizes. Then use it to meditate, develop understanding. The other way is mind sweeping method combined with metta. Then when you do it, after you have done it until your mind is in theory, then no need to continuously do. It is just a skillful means to train your mind to develop the stability of sati, like the four support. If you know that you can go into it direct, then why waste time on the method and technique? But some people need to do something on this or not to believe that they are meditating. So anapanasati can make you calm and peaceful. Yeah, when you are mindful of your inner and out breath, you become calm and peaceful. Then mind serving method and metta are the same. It can decondition your heedless thinking because you feel relaxed, feel relaxed, you sweep to your whole body, from forehead to your bottom. And this mind sweeping method is very useful with her. when you feel and relax, there is no thinking. So this is how you decondition your healer's thing. Then after that, you combine it with metta. Metta is to radiate loving kindness, to radiate well-being and happiness, first to yourself, then to others, then to have a radiant smile. When you have a radiant smile, your mind automatically relaxes. Well, for you to smile, you must be at ease. There must be joy. That's why you read a radiant smile. Then the facial muscle relaxes by itself. So these are skillful means. If you do it, after a little while, you realize your heedless thinking slowly, slowly, slow down and then gone then you can experience the moment of very quiet moments. That is also the training in asana. It's just like we relax and maintain awareness. We can also reach a state where the heedless thinking is due to your mental hindrance, your lack of spiritual faculty. So when you relax and maintain awareness, it's the same as a first and second step of the four support. So my survey method also you feel. Relax is the same feel. When you feel is very close to the awareness. Your feeling is the first aggregate to come out from the what they call awareness. The moment you are aware, there is nothing, no feeling, nothing. And feeling is the first to come out before the thinking before the stirring, before the emotion. That's why when you feel, you become peaceful, but there is no thinking. That's why my sweeping method is, you go to the area, starting with your forehead, you feel, then you relax. When you relax, you don't think, you feel good. So the four support is the same, relax, you feel good. Then you can maintain awareness. No different. But you must know these are skillful means where people cannot make their mind quiet and still. That is their problem. So most people go cannot meditate. They say, I think a lot. The restlessness is there. And sometimes I sleepy. And sometimes there is pain. There is itchiness. 
there is a lot of mental hindrance inside there. Uh, so the mental hindrance is doubt, restlessness of mind, sloth and torpor. Then the sensual desire you will is your pain, your whatever emotion that make you the way you are. So with the hindrance, it will hinder your mind for entering the meditative state of inner peace, inner calmness, and inner awareness. So what must you do? So most people don't know what to do. They look for a teacher to teach them how to meditate. And most teachers, they follow standard commentary or text. Uh, give you a method, give you a technique, give you an object of meditation. And he said, either focus, concentrate, or be mindful of the object of meditation. They say be mindful, but they ask you to note. And they call it vipassana. You find out yourself what you are doing. So all this, they are forced to do this because their mind cannot be a free mind that settles down and become very quiet and very still. But they don't understand what sati is. Without thought, the awareness nature is really there. So sati is awareness before the knowing. You just relax, silent, don't try to know, don't try to do, then thought cannot be active. Then whatever that is continuing the activity or thinking and movement, they are from your daily life. Because you are not mindful. That's why Krishnamurti said, you live a life of disorder. You know why it's disorder or not? Like a country. When it's disorder means what? Free for all, understand? Not? Everybody do what they like. Eh? Then there will be a riot. There will be crisis, understand? Not? Where there is no more order. So everything will go wrong. Chaos. Riots. Yeah? Then a lot of robbery, everything. So you must live a life with order. How to have order? There must be clarity. There must be understanding. What you need is mindfulness. So if you don't have mindfulness, you must have the spiritual faculty. Then mindfulness automatically come in. Yeah, the spiritual faculty is mainly sadha virya. Sadha is to calm your mind down. When you have faith, you are calm and composed. Then when you see the importance of the Buddhist, the Buddhist teaching or the Buddha Dharma, then you will have virya to go all out and cultivate. And the first thing you cultivate is sati. Then when you develop sati, stabilize it, it becomes samadhi. Then with sati and samadhi, you can meditate. You can see things as they are. You can insight into phenomena. You can awaken to truth. That's how the five spiritual faculty help you to develop the understanding. And with the five spiritual faculty, the hindrance cannot arise. They are, they are opposite pair. Spiritual faculty allow you to understand spiritual teaching. They don't understand all this. That's why they have no choice. They have to do something to fix their mind. That's why they end up mostly in thought-based meditation, either one-pointedness or absorption or concentration, focusing. So when they do that, of course, you keep on doing like anything, you become quite skillful. Or oh, then they manage to stop the thinking. Where they focus, they concentrate, they kill all the thinking into one point until the thinking cannot move. But this is a conditioned state. This is not a free mind. So in a conditioned state, not only you kill the thought and doesn't think, you also suppress the mental hindrance. That's why you cannot understand, you cannot develop wisdom to counter the mental hindrance. Not knowing that a spiritual faculty is what you need. So all these are the reasons. Yeah? Then I will read to you one more part. This part is very important. You turn back to 205, the last paragraph. 
The key to meditation is awareness or sati, which is the first factor of enlightenment. With awareness, you can develop the understanding of why your mind is like that. How it is conditioned to react to sense experience via your wrong view or deluded view. So your wrong view and opinion of thing, born of memory, is the thing that make you heedless. That is Dharma investigation. You investigate, you find out. Then inquire deep into who is the meditator or who is doing the meditation. Then what is the I or the me all about? If you don't inquire like that, through awareness, you cannot understand. Like I told you, when I silent my mind in awareness, then I realize there is nobody inside there. Everything is happening naturally, dependent, originating, condition, arising, cause of all. Then I realize the form and mind is not what we think. This one is not me. He know you, he know me. This is just a bundle of causes and conditions that support the arising. Then through the sense basis, sense data, sense data, and the awareness or the consciousness from the pure awareness, it trigger off mundane consciousness. Then I explained this morning. This is how you know the world. This is how you interact with the world. Through the mundane six and door consciousness, you created the world. Everything that you come to know, to perceive, yeah, to like give meaning to. They come from your Monday mind. That's how you stir, how you react to sense experience. That's how you become what you are. You can see clearly because of delusion leading to heedlessness, leading to karmic negativity. Then every life you come, if you don't have the understanding, you will become deluded, committing the same mistake again and again tormented, afflicted. So this is the Dhamma that you must develop. Then after that, I continue. Why did the Buddha say it's sakaraditi or self-delusion? Now then you see the danger of sakaraditi or self-delusion. Why are the thoughts so active, judgmental, intrusive, uh, this intrusive word, people with OCD, they will know. Yes. Uh, people in depression uh, uh, with OCD problem. <laughs> yeah. And why can't you just let things be? The moment you are aware, the Dhamma will come to you. Understanding will come to you. Then you will understand it and awaken to it. So relax and be with the moment in silent awareness to experience all of the beauty, pristine beauty and wonders of life and existence. Once you realize you will not, sorry, you will know how to accord and flow, then you will not be afflicted anymore. Hence life becomes very meaningful and very beautiful. So this is how you should develop the understanding and the meditation. Okay. So very good. So we finish, yeah? Uh, uh, sadhu, sadhu, sorry. So appendix one, we don't have to go through. We are designed for something, yeah? the heart sutra. Then we also have uh, what they call appendix three. Yeah? This one is very important. Yeah? Appendix three is basically uh, very important sharing uh, at the time, I remember. There is a lot of condition for this uh, appendix three to arise. Uh, okay, uh, Manya, can you read? Appendix three, lesson five of the Satipatthana Sutta and Meditation Class. Date 6th of April, 2014. Time 3 to 6 p.m. Lesson five of the Satipatthana Sutta a meditation class at Wu Ping Jing Shui, conducted by Brother Bio Ken Kun. Notes taken to assist in the understanding. 1.0 Pure Land Chanting. Is it meditation? 
1.1, developing the five spiritual faculties. Just like what Sister Monica said, chanting is also one of the methods or techniques or skillful means used to anchor your mind. But the pure land type of chanting is more than that. Because in the pure land the tradition, they have this great faith in the Buddha and the Bodhisattva. They, they chant, and due to the great vows of this Buddha and Bodhisattva, it can arise the causes and conditions for them to develop the very strong faith to connect to their vows. Their vows are very heavy and powerful because of their great virtues, wisdom, and perfections. Hence, all these vows can become part of nature's law, and they will manifest and respond on their own. That is, you don't need to have the Buddhas or Kuan Yin Bodhisattva to be all over the places to listen to you and respond. Because of the Buddhas and the Bodhisattva's great vows, if you chant with understanding and you do it sincerely with very strong faith, it can help you to develop a very strong affinity with their natures and such faith and affinity will connect you to their vows and their vows will bring forth the causes and conditions to assist you to progress along the path of Dharma and help you develop the five spiritual faculties needed for you to develop the meditation. 1.2, leading to Hifu living. You may see them like only chanting, chanting and chanting, but in actual fact, they are training their mind to be Hifu via mindfulness of the Buddha's name. Their faith in the Buddha's name will arise the strong sadhan due to the repeated chanting with understanding, leading to viriya, spiritual zeal, then together with the sati, developed wire chanting, walking and bowing, reverential salutation. It will bring forth the sati and samadhi needed to develop the clear mind, which is the meditative or silent mind without thoughts, to see things as they are, to arise the wisdom, which is the last of the five spiritual faculties. When sati and samadhi are established, then during every moment of their daily life, when they see, hear, smell, taste, or feel something, they will be very different because they will be no longer heedless like before. Instead, they will be heedful most of the time, and their mind are very peaceful, calm, and just aware they are taught. Hence, clarity of mind. Most of the time, and this is possible, because they hold their mantra with faith and they do it very sincerely and diligently. 1.3. Overcoming the five mental hindrances leading to direct seeing. To develop the meditation, we only need to develop these five spiritual faculties, which will help us overcome the five mental hindrances that hinder one from becoming peaceful and mindful. These five mental hindrances you don't have to fight them, control or suppress them, or worry about them, because once these five spiritual faculties of sadha, viriya, sati, samadhi, and panya are there, the hindrances will cease to be, and then the mind with sati and samadhi will have the clarity to see things as they are, to arise the wisdom panya. Then their mind is no longer heedless, and they will no longer see things with a conditioned mind, i.e. no more seeing with their views and opinions and the egoic mind, and their thoughts will no longer interfere with the direct seeing which will lead to the awakening, understanding, and the enlightenment. They will see the dependent original, or, origination within their own form and mind. They will start to understand the four noble truths on their, on their own. Then they will start to see clearly what the Buddha meant by the five mental hindrances and the five spiritual faculties. They will also see clearly the three evil roots of greed, hatred, and delusion within their own mundane mind, and why the Buddha called them evil roots. They will also come to understand how the seven factors of enlightenment come to be and how their sense bases actually function, i.e., how upon contact consciousness and feeling comes to be, and because they have sati and samadhi, they will also have the ability to see clearly how through delusion, one is conditioned into negativity, grasping, clinging, and attachment, then how suffering comes to be. Then when they are just silent and aware, they will come to understand how the arising of non 
the reason hindrance of mind comes to be. Then later on, when they continue to be just silent and aware, they will come to know how the disappearance or abandoning of the, the reason hindrance comes to be. Then how through non-delusion they will know how the non-arising in the future of the abandoned hindrance comes to be. And all these are possible. This is how they will cultivate the Satipatthana or four foundation of mindfulness. 1.4. Leading to enlightenment. Sati will allow them to also understand how their minds stood via their delusion to react to sense experiences, to arise to craving or their evil roots to condition their own suffering. This is how pure land chanting can also lead to the enlightenment in the here and the now. Note, sati is awareness or mindfulness before the knowing and samadhi is the collected and unwavering silent mind. 1.5. Cultivation of the five spiritual faculties facilitates meditation. Sadhan or faith will make your mind confident, composed and very calm. Hence, no more restlessness and doubt. And when there is virya, you will not be sleepy anymore because this virya or spiritual zeal will drive you to diligently cultivate. Then, when you have sati, you are not heedless anymore. You are mindful and always aware and your mind is always with the moment in sati and when you stabilize it, samadhi will arise. When samadhi established, the mind will be collected and unwavering. Hence, you can see things as they are to understand the truth and the reality leading to the wisdom. Once these five spiritual faculties are in place, your mental hindrances will be gone. Then, you will automatically know how to meditate. 1.6. Mind and chanting as one. That's why when they chant and chant until that for how or the Buddha's name and the awareness become one, i.e. mind and the chanting as one, like there is no one to chant, just an awareness of the chanting, of the vibration, then their sati will stabilize. At that time, they will be very different because the five spiritual faculties that are so stable will transform them. Then throughout the day, even when they are not chanting the Buddha's name, they will also have a type of heedful mind. It will like chant with awareness by itself. Sometimes you don't chant, also it will be there. 1.7 Awareness of the Chanting there was this very soothing and continuous chanting of Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo in his background. Uh, sorry, I need to pronounce it. It sounds like that because uh, it's not just Amitofo. Amitofo, Amitofo, Amitofo. It's like that one. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you say Amitofo, Amitofo. <laughs> You want to chant with the understanding and the faith. That's all. <laughs> uh, it's okay. Huh? Yeah, you're not for me. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So as I listened to that chanting, which was repeated many times on the background, I was also able to follow and chant it, and chant it so naturally and so mindfully. I can chant it until it becomes very clear to me. Then one day, when I was driving, all of a sudden, this chanting... Wow, 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 I was trying. While I was driving, mm. all of a sudden, this chanting just arose from inside my brain and there was such clarity that I stopped by, as, that I stopped my car somewhere and I silenced my mind to listen to it. It was like the mind and the chanting was in complete harmony and synchrony as one. I remember initially I was chanting, then all of a sudden it was like no one is chanting. Then everything stopped. Then somewhere be underneath my brain, from behind the chanting, from behind, the chanting automatically come out and the mindfulness on it was so stable and so clear. And it just stayed there fully of every fully, fully aware, aware. Yeah. of everything. That's I that's how I come to know. This type of pure land chanting can also develop the five spiritual faculties of sadhana, virya, sati, and samadhi 
leading to the wisdom and how the mind can become one with it. And there was a realization that there was no one chanting and the nature within is just aware, fully aware. The chanting just repeats itself and there was just an awareness of it. So the real chanting is very different because there is no one to chant. There is just the mind that is aware of phenomena, whether it is physical, mental or nature's phenomena. In this case, it is a mental phenomenon. 1.8. Cultivation of the Four Foundations of Mindfulness All these are possible when you have properly developed all these spiritual faculties until they are very stable. Then, even in the midst of your daily life, your mind will be very different because of the stability of your sati and samadhi. You will be able to see your mental intentions, your aggregates of mind, like your feelings, perceptions, activities of mind, emotions, mind states, etc., including the consciousness. Then you will also see your mental and physical flows, and after that, you will be able to see to cultivate the four foundations of mindfulness. And you will be able to use it. Eh? Oh, uh. You will be able to use it to cultivate the four foundations of mindfulness and your wisdom will keep on arising. The four foundations of mindfulness cultivation will bring forth the enlightenment because the cultivation of the four foundations of mindfulness will accumulate into the cultivation of the four noble truths. Then, the fourth noble truth, which is the meditation as taught by the Buddha, is the noble eightfold path because it leads to the end of all suffering, which is the enlightenment in the here and the now. So finally, whatever meditation you do, if it does not lead you back to the four foundation of happiness, okay, uh, of happiness, sorry. <laughs> you just <shall> laugh. <laughs> For foundation of happiness. <laughs> Everybody want to cultivate and make you very happy. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So finally, whatever meditation you do, if it does not lead you back to the four foundation of mindfulness, the four noble truths and the noble eightfold path, then it is not the meditation as taught by the Buddha. Uh, this is very good advice. Eh? So the, the noble eightfold power are the noble qualities of enlightened being. So if you don't cultivate that, you don't have the embodiment. I don't know what that enlightenment is. It. Uh, that's why the Buddha's definition of an Arya is different. Arya is a noble one, very noble in all aspects of life and understanding. That's why noble eightfold power, you look at it, is everything. The eight power factor, all very noble. And within the eight power factor, you have all this noble understanding, right view. Then to communicate, to live life, to act and to speak and communicate, you have to arrive thought. You have to deliver speech, communication, email. So that's why they have right thought, right speech, right action. Then you have to live your life. Also, right livelihood, right living. Then they are very diligent, very noble. Yes, they apply the four right effort to constantly purify your thought process, abandon, prevent the unwholesome thought from arising. Then cultivate the wholesome thought or right thought, right spirit, right action, and right livelihood that you have not developed. Then after that, the final right effort is to refine upon it and to perfect it, all those wholesome quality that you have, start to cultivate or develop. Then after that is meditative. The sati must be the right one, huh? not the one that people believe is sati. Huh? Then the right samadhi. Also not a conditioned state, not focusing, not concentrating. It's just the free mind Having this stability, it will not waver. It is collected. That's why it can live life. It can see things as they are. That's why you can develop wisdom and understanding when your mindfulness stabilize and become samadhi. Okay? Yeah. Continue. 1.9. 
cultivation of the noble eightfold path. Caution. If you think chanting alone is the meditation, then you can be deceived. Chanting is just a technique or a skillful means to initially train your mind to develop the five spiritual faculties of Sada, Viriya, Sati, Samadhi, and Panya needed to overcome the five mental hindrances. After that, only the real meditation begins. That is, after your five spiritual faculties had, have been, had been cultivated and your daily mindfulness stabilized, then only the real meditation, which is the cultivation of the noble eightfold path, why daily mindfulness can begin. And within the noble eightfold path, we had the Sama Sati path factor, which is the cultivation of the four foundations of mindfulness, which is also the focus of our Dharma discussion. 2.0, understanding the essence of the Buddha's teaching. Hope this is clear and that is also the reason why I had always advised you all that meditation is to done with understanding. Otherwise, you are wasting your time and you cannot progress because you are not focused and you are actually doing it without the proper understanding. So be very clear about the whole teaching. Pariyati, or the, learn, or the learning of the doctrine or teaching, is the first phase of the Dharma cultivation. Only after having a very clear understanding of the Dharma, then only can one put the Dharma into practice, in daily life effectively, leading to the second phase of the Dharma cultivation, which is Pati Pati. Be patient with Pariyati, otherwise one becomes gullible, when cultivating Pati Pati. 2.0, Kifunas is the equal equals to Sati plus Noble Eightfold Path Cultivation. One must understand that the essence of Buddha teaching is the Four Noble Truths and how from there all the other teachings come to be. How and why the Buddha highlighted the importance of Kifunas via Dhammapada verses 21, 22 and 23. And, one, and why one must understand what heedfulness is. Heedfulness equals to ever mindful plus constantly meditative to cultivate the noble eightfold path or meditation as taught by the Buddha, as defined by the Buddha's Dhammapada verse 23. 2.2 Sati, first factor of enlightenment. That's the reason why the first factor of enlightenment is Sati. Because without sati, there is no meditation. And without sati, there is no heedfulness. And according to Dhammapada verse 21, without heedfulness, you are heedless, and the heedless are as if dead, dead spiritually. All these are very clear. So to develop the meditation, one must initially train one's mind to be heedful. 2.3. Stabilize the mind sati, to cultivate the four foundation of mindfulness. This is also the reason why the first category of training of the first foundation of mindfulness, Kaya Nupasana, is Anapanasati, which is just to train the mind to be mindful or aware of the in and out breath, to do just that. Then stabilize it and use it to cultivate mindfulness of the four postures leading to the daily mindfulness to develop all the other subsequent four foundations of mindfulness training and cultivation. 3.0, pitfalls of thought-based meditation. When you understand all this, you will know how to proceed. Otherwise, you will deviate because most living beings are valuable. The thought meditation is some form of fantasy or like something very mystical. Then, when they meditate and develop some form of special experience that other people don't experience, then they think this is very special. Then they will attach and cling and they want to know, is it a sign that I had achieved or realized? That's how one deviates because they don't understand what their focus is. They don't inquire to find out what is meditation. When you don't have a clear understanding of what you do, you will end up keep debating. Then you may also end up having fantasies about meditation. That's how many cultivators or meditators got trapped. And the other danger is they cannot see thought. They cannot see the danger of thought. 
they cannot understand what sati is. And because sati is beyond thought, and if you continue to allow thoughts to come in and distract you, then it will become thought-based meditation instead of mindfulness-based meditation. All of the thought-based meditation will not bring you the meditative results that you're looking for because what you want to realize is the Dharma, which is Akaliko. Akaliko means timeless. This Dharma is beyond thought, beyond time. So if the instrument you use to meditate is thought, you cannot reach it because you are limited by the instrument you use to develop the meditation. So with this, I think it should be very clear by now and you shouldn't make the same mistake again. By now, you all should start to understand why I keep on emphasizing in the past that meditation had to be done with understanding. You don't just blindly follow instructions, just like what the Buddha told the Kalama. You should not believe what the spiritual teacher tells you, not even the Buddha yourself. You have to investigate and find out. Then, when you understand, you will be very clear. Your mind will be very different and you will know how to proceed with the cultivation. Otherwise, you become gullible. Then, again, you deviate. 4.0 Sati Mindfulness or awareness Question by Sister Chui Brother Dio, I am afraid I had to ask this somewhat simple question. Sati in Pali means mindfulness or awareness because I see the words being used interchangeably and sometimes I just get confused. Can you please again, can you please explain again? Thank you. Answer by Bharatyo. It is a very good question. You see, sati is a Pali word. It is translated as mindfulness, a very commonly accepted translation, but nobody really inquire into this word mindfulness. If you split up the two words, then you will get the meaning, mindfulness right? But you never inquire and ask, what does this mean? The mind is full of what? If you say mindful, if you say full of thoughts, then that is definitely not sati. So it is full of what? Awareness, right? Sister Tree said, I actually define it as mind in fullness of that moment. Rather, you answered, it still doesn't explain anything, right? When you say mind in fullness of that moment, what are you trying to tell me? Because within that moment, you can also think, i.e. mindful of thinking within that moment. Sister Chui said, no, you can't think when you are in the moment. How can you think? You're supposed to be... Radio replied, you can be in the moment and still think because you are not aware. 4.1 a mindful of awareness. But when you are in the moment without thought, then it is a different thing. Mind is full of awareness and then you are without thought. That's why I say you never inquire full of what. When mind is full of awareness, it cannot have thought. It can only be aware. But that word is, no, is not used. Only in recent years, later teachers use that word. Then they try incorporating them now. That's why awareness has become a new word nowadays. The actual word should be pure awareness, without thought, that is sati. 4.2 Be with the moment without thought. But they went on to confuse it with another Pali word, and they said it carries the meaning of remembrance and recollection. They said sati has a lot to do with memory and recollection. So what is sati? I don't want to know the history because when I meditate, I can be with the moment without thought. Hence, I can understand. That's why I know what sati is. Sati is mind in fullness, fully of awareness without thought. That's why I said sati is awareness before the knowing and you just aware. Why can't you just be aware? Because you think a lot. You are so heedless and you are seldom aware within the moment. Because of your habitual thinking, tendencies, born of heedlessness or habitual heedless thinking. You also have a lot of fear, anxiety, and the hindrances of mind, like sensual desire, ill will, restlessness, and doubt. They keep on arising to haunt you, hence the reason why you cannot be aware. 
5.0 Sati, pure awareness before the knowing. Awareness before the knowing means what? The knowing is your thoughts, perception, your aggregates of mind. Initially, it is just a pure awareness before even feeling of perception arises, before the labeling, the words and the views and the opinions interfere. It is just like what the Buddha said, in the seeing, there is only the seeing consciousness. Do you understand? And there is no one to see, just the pure consciousness arising, the pure awareness before you input the content of consciousness, or just the pure direct seeing, without the word, without the labeling, without your conscious mind focusing and perceiving through memory to recall, etc. 5.1 General Spacious Awareness It is just a general spacious awareness, just aware without a center. The moment thoughts comes out, it means you had already focused and recalled through memory and that's not sati anymore. So when you want to understand what sati is, you need to have a very calm and silent mind. If your mind is not silent, the true nature cannot shine forth. The true mind cannot come out because your mind can only do one thing at a time. Either it is aware within or it is lost in thought, heedlessly lost in thought. The human being, because of their heedlessness and their delusion, they are constantly lost in thought and seldom or hardly aware. That is the reason why the Buddha said, the heedless are as if death. Dead, spiritually dead. 5.2 Awareness and clear comprehension. Sati Sampanjana. Question by Sister Chui. Then, is it okay for me to think of the four, fa of the four foundations of mindfulness as the four foundations of awareness? Is it appropriate? Answer by Brother Dio. Yes, you can say that. It's not harmful. But later part in the sutta, they add in the word sampajana, which is clear comprehension, and call it sati sampajana. So you're not only mindful, you must also have clear comprehension of what you are mindful of. That's why the third category of cultivation under Kaya Nupasana is awareness and clear comprehension of what is going on or sati sampajana. There is clarity. Then there is also the sentence, aware internally and externally. All this you will slowly understand when you cultivate. Before you cultivate, when you had no when you had not realized the enlightenment as yet, it is very difficult for you to use your mundane mind's rational thinking to try to understand. When you use thought, it is very difficult. That's why Miss Lee printed out this J. Krishna Muti's quote on what is awareness, which I just sent out for sharing today. Maybe it is meant to be. Okay, we stop here. Huh? Uh, afterwards, only we continue. Huh? Awareness. The definition. Yeah? J. Krishna Muti defined it. Awareness is the silent and choiceless observation of what is. Mm. Okay. Uh, almost two thirty. Yeah, so I give you back your one and a half hour yeah, of awareness based meditation. Uh, maybe one hour fifteen minutes will do. Huh? Otherwise, too long for you. So you can combine formal sitting or later on, maybe one hour of formal sitting you can. Otherwise, forty forty five minutes. Then you do your contemplation or bowing, walking, whatever. Yeah. Any of the reflection and complete, uh, contemplation and inquiry, they can let you develop better, stable understanding you use. It. Sometimes you can just go for a very natural walk outside or along the corridor or the mountain up there, see whether they allow you to go or not. If not, better than go. Yeah. Uh, I think keep within the temple environment better. Uh, you can like column, look out of the window, uh, or look at nature. 